Aquas New York Harbor Limited Edition, the Pro Pilot X, the Full Steel Holstein Edition 2022. Together, I think these three watches do a great job of representing Oris watches in 2022. And I'm excited because this brand, this is one I've had my eye on for years and it's a favorite of the watch community. But somehow until now, it's not a brand that I've had much experience with. And maybe we'll touch on why. Each of these watches deserves its own video, but more importantly, I'm very lazy. So I have a compromise. I've added chapters to this video, so if you're only interested in one watch, you can skip to that section. And you can miss out on all this sweet, hot content. But I'm not going to tell you how to live your life, I'm just going to be passive aggressive about it. Oris is based in northern Switzerland in the town of Holstein, not far from Basel. The brand started in 1904 and by the 1960s was one of the 10 largest watchmakers in the world. And then the quartz crisis of the 70s and 80s happened and things got a little rocky. Even before that, in 1970, Oris joined a group that was the predecessor of the Swatch Group. But it didn't really find much success in the face of this kind of technological revolution that was happening. In 1982, Oris regained its independence through a management buyout and it's remained independent ever since, which I think is part of the appeal to watch collectors. We seem to find joy in small and medium-sized companies that set their own direction and only answer to their customers, and I think this is true of Oris. The brand seems to go about things its own way, and each of these watches demonstrates that. Take the Aquas New York Harbor Limited Edition. This is one of the many watches Oris produced in, in some collaboration with a charitable organization. There's a long list of Oris watches that aim to bring attention and some money to beneficent efforts. Oceans and reefs and lakes and getting supplies to remote villages and now oysters. Oysters are cool. Not to eat, no. No human should be eating briny sea snot. But what they do in the wild, interesting and important. Oysters clean water, a lot of water. They also create reefs that prevent erosion and provide food to the natural wildlife. But the oyster population in New York Harbor has dropped to one one thousandth of its original population, and the Billion Oyster Project aims to reverse that trend. And this watch, the Aquas New York Harbor Limited Edition, exists to bring attention and a little money to this oyster effort. Oris doesn't say how much money gets to organizations they work with, but I'm guessing the main benefit is the attention these partners get from the collaboration. Functionally, this is a normal Aquas watch. It's in the appearance that we see the differences. This watch is 41.5 millimeters across, 13.2 millimeters thick, and 48 millimeters long. It has 300 meters of water resistance, which I think might be more water resistance than New York Harbor oysters have. Take that, bivalves. On this rubber strap, the watch weighs 111 grams. This edition comes with both a strap and a bracelet, which is not the case with the standard Aquas watches. On the bracelet, the watch weighs about 152 grams. Because it comes with both the steel and rubber options, the watch costs $2,700, which is slightly more than normal Aquas's. Another differentiator is the dial. This is a mother of pearl dial, which is both appropriate to the Billion Oyster Project and yet totally inappropriate, I think. As far as I know, mother of pearl requires either killing an oyster or using an empty shell of an oyster. Maybe there are shells which can't be rehabitated by oysters and that's what they're using here. I don't know, I'm not a malacologist. Behind the dial is the Oris Caliber 733. It's a modified Salita SW200-1. Oris has started putting the in-house Caliber 400 in some Aquas watches, but not this one and certainly not at this price. We'll get to the Caliber 400 soon. On my 7-inch wrist, this feels like a 40mm watch, not a 41.5mm watch. It wears slightly smaller than its dimensions and that's entirely due to the short lugs and the integrated style of these lugs. I don't like this setup. I do really like that this watch comes with a bracelet and a strap, but I don't like this proprietary system. I can't put this dive watch on a mesh strap or a purlon or NATO or a crocodile leather strap just to make everyone angry. I mean, how am I supposed to troll people? And the bracelet, polished outer links. Woof, that's not for me. I can't do it. At least fully brush it. But the rubber is very comfortable, super supple rubber, which I like and it comes with a nice deployant clasp. I wasn't expecting this for the price. 
A deploying clasp adds some security and helps assure that the watch won't find a home amongst the newly housed billion oysters. From ocean depths to airy heights, this watch is an interesting path for Oris. The Pro Pilot X was announced earlier this year in 2022. It's not an entirely new direction, but a step on the path laid by the Big Crown Pro Pilot X in 2019. That watch used a new movement with a 10 day power reserve and a new design. Super modern and built of titanium. Very aerospace. I'd say that this Pro Pilot X is the first mainstream reference in this new direction. The watch is 39mm wide, 12mm thick, and 46mm long. It has 20mm lug spacings and a water resistance of 100 meters. And even on this bracelet, it weighs only 98 grams. It lists for $4,300. The watch comes with either a salmon dial, a blue dial, or a gray dial, and you know the salmon is my favorite. It's my favorite dial not just because it's the most unusual color, but also because it's the strangest option for this watch design. And look at this thing, I describe this as hyper-modern. It looks like a stealth bomber or a spaceship from a sci-fi movie. Gray, angular, super light, kind of futuristic military stuff. And then a pink dial? No, excuse me, a salmon dial? I don't know whose idea this was and I don't know if they're selling, but I dig it. All the dial colors also have a subtle texture which I really like. Much more appropriate than a sunburst dial or a glossy finish. On my 18 centimeter wrist, this watch nearly disappears, not visually, but tactilely. Very comfortable and light enough that I can wear it loose if I want to. And a small, nice surprise is that the bracelet uses screws. Many titanium watches use pins and collars, but Oris did this one right. Powering the watch is that in-house caliber 400 that I was talking about. It's a relatively new innovation for Oris, and I admire the fact that it's actually got more going for it than just the fact that you can market it as in-house. The Caliber 400 has 120 hours of power reserve, that's 5 days. It's also anti-magnetic to at least 2000 gauss thanks to its 30 non-ferrous components, and Oris offers a 10 year warranty for watches with this movement. That's a big little detail, for $4300 this is pretty damn good. But it's not all rainbows and movements that look like smiling bears. I have some issues with this watch. First, this is titanium, so it's softer than my abs after the holidays. Titanium has a very good tensile strength, but it can scratch easily, and this watch, yow. I've seen normal wear from someone who owned the Blue Dial reference for less than a month, and that thing looked like it got in a knife fight and forgot to bring a knife. My other issue is much more subjective. I'm just not into this angular design. I like that it exists, I'm glad Oris is taking risks, and I know for a fact that a lot of people love how this looks. Good, I'm happy about that. But it just doesn't work for me and my style. For me, this is just a bit too stylized to fit my whole vibe, which you might describe as artisanal coffee dadcore. This though, this bizarre watch is more my speed. This is the Full Steel 2022 Holstein Edition. This is the third year Oris has done a limited run of 250 watches that they've called a Holstein edition. In 2020, there was a bronze diver chronograph. In 2021, Oris did a gray dial pointer date. And this year, in 2022, the full steel. This is a nearly perfect recreation of the full steel world timer that Oris made in the mid 1990s. Same design, same size, same movement even. The watch is 36.5 millimeters across. 11.8 millimeters thick and 43.5 millimeters long. It takes 18 millimeter straps under its shrouded lug design. It has 50 meters of water resistance. It weighs about 150 grams on the full bracelet and it's limited to just 250 pieces. It lists for $4,300. Good Lord, this thing is funky. I've showed this to a bunch of people, some watch nerds and some normies. And the most common reactions are one, Wow, there's a lot going on here. Two, this thing is heavy. Three, does this seem small to you? Yes, yes, and yes. There's a lot going on here because this is a dual time watch with a date and a day night indicator and a small seconds hand. At three o'clock is a register for tracking a second time zone. So unlike a GNT complication, this register features a tiny 12 hour clock which I find easier to read than a GMT hand because I think of time on a 12 hour scale. What you could lose from this display is whether it's day or night in that second time zone. 
and that's what this little aperture is for. When it's day, a white color is visible, and when it's night, the disc rotates to a black color. But what's really great about this travel watch are these buttons at 4 o'clock and 8 o'clock. These allow you to move the main hour hand forward or backward one hour at a time. You don't have to take the watch off, you don't have to mess with the crown, it's easy and fun, and there's a 100% chance that I'm going to wear these buttons down before I return the watch to Oris. And that's what the red triangles are near the bottom of the dial. They're labels for the buttons. This is all possible because of the Oris Caliber 690 movement. It's a modified ETA 2836-2 that Oris has been using for almost 30 years. I love travel watches, they're my favorite type of complication. And my favorite type of travel watch is a dual time watch. And my favorite type of dual time? Yep, push button dual times. Pretty great, right? And on my 18 centimeter wrist? No, I have sad. It's just too small for me. I'm not actually sad that it's too small for me. I'm actually pretty impressed and happy that Oris was like, f it, we're gonna recreate this watch accurately. And I think this will be great on many smaller wrists. With only 250 pieces being made, this watch doesn't need to have mass appeal. It just needs to be attractive to the right number of moderately sized humans. But even at 36 and a half millimeters, this watch has some noticeable heft. At 150 grams, it's surprisingly heavy for its size. That's partly due to the thick bracelet links and partly due to the thick movement inside. And the hands, five hands, that's gotta add up, right? No, I'm kidding, don't at me. This watch really speaks to me. It's not just the usefulness of the complication, but how unusual it looks. To me, this is a very 90s watch, and that's an aesthetic that's been increasingly attractive to me. I don't think it's nostalgia because I wasn't even looking at watches back then, but I think it's just the cyclical nature of fashion. The busy dial, the shrouded lugs, the stepped case, the protruding buttons at 4 and 8, and the way the crown looks like it's unscrewed even though it's not. So much weirdness going on here. And so I say good on Aorus for bringing this back even for a hot minute. Also loomed numerals? Shoot. In the parlance of its time, it's all that and a bag of chips. These three watches really give me a glimpse of Aorus today. We have an Aquas dive watch, maybe the brand's most popular line, a pilot watch using its new movement and new design, and a special edition throwback dual time. I think there's a lot to like about each of these watches, and I think I get why this is a darling brand for many watch collectors. Aorus is clearly doing things in its own way. And yet, I still haven't found a watch from the brand that checks enough boxes for me that I would add one to my collection. But I find myself really rooting for Oris. Between its independent nature and its charitable efforts and even the interactions that I've had with people at the company, I feel like I'm just waiting for the right watch for me. And it seems like each month, the brand gets a little closer to taking my money. So I got that going for me, which is nice.